All right, hello guys, and welcome to our weekly forecast. This forecast is going to extend from the 8th till about the 15th, and if this is your first time tuning in to our weekly forecast, we do a precipitation forecast, temperature forecast, and special note segment of this video. In the special note segment, we kind of get to tell you guys a little bit more about what's going to be happening throughout the week, and it's, it's a really interesting product, I guess, and, and you don't see it a lot in other weather channels or other sorts of weather sources. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to check out the links in the description for our social medias. Now, we're getting things started off with our precipitation forecast, and you can see there is a lot going on here. I'm going to start out with the southeast here. We do have below average temperatures from Maine, that is coastal Maine, and coastal New England, down through portions of the northeast mid-Atlantic into some of those more central regions like Kentucky, Tennessee, southern Illinois and Indiana, southern Missouri, all of Arkansas, as well as eastern Oklahoma and Texas, and then all of those Gulf states were all in that below average precipitation region. And it's going to be quite dry for these regions. Particularly, you can see there is a little bit of more brown there for some of the coastal regions of Texas and Louisiana, as well as some coastal regions of Florida as well, these areas are going to be quite dry, and the reason I have those ones in the brown is because they actually average a higher amount of precipitation, even though almost all of these areas are going to get pretty much none for the entire week. So those are the areas that are going to be more particularly dry uh, overall. Now, in the north, you can see for the most part, we do have a lot of precipitation from the west coast all the way into upstate New York, some of those Finger Lake regions, and the Adirondack Mountains a lot of those areas. So we're going to start out with the west coast here. You can see we have our first, second, and third shade of green. The third shade meaning almost constant precipitation. Going to be quite stormy for the west coast, or the northwest coast at least, for Oregon, Washington, you know, Seattle, Portland. All of these areas are in that third shade of green. So it's going to be quite rainy. Now, we also have a second shade of green that starts in Montana, moves into the Dakotas, uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, northern Michigan as well. All of these areas are going to be quite above average as far as precipitation is concerned. And we do have a third shade of green that extends from portions of North Dakota into Minnesota and Wisconsin. These areas, again, are going to have a lot of storminess throughout the week from the 8th all the way to the 15th. We're going to be dealing with storminess in this dark green region. Now, moving on to your temperature forecast, you can see there's two areas of below average temperatures, one there for northern Maine, northern New Hampshire, northern Vermont, and northern New York as well. These areas are going to be a little bit below average, not going to be too noticeable. Uh, and then we have our west coast of the United States, so California, Oregon, Washington, and into a lot of those uh, Rocky Mountains into the north central United States. In the north central United States, that correlates a lot with my September forecast, having those regions like the Dakotas, Montana in the below average column. That's going to help make my forecast verify even further. But this is the look for this week. Even, you know, putting the September forecast aside, I don't ever use that to make the weekly forecast. But I'm just letting you guys know that this does correlate with that quite nicely. Now, we do have above average temperatures there for Texas in through Oklahoma into the Great Lakes region and then into some of the southern New England and the mid-Atlantic states there and the entire southeast. We do have a second shade of orange there for some of the Gulf states and then up into the Mississippi River area into Kentucky, southern Ohio, southern Indiana, southern Illinois, and then some of the uh, regions like Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, all of these regions are going to be quite above average and it's almost kind of a heat wave heading in for these areas. I'm going to talk more about that in the special notes segment, which we're going to start right now. Now, starting out with your sec first special note, we have a heat wave for a lot of these regions. So Texas up through Oklahoma, Missouri, the Great Lakes regions, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, Southern New England, down into the mid-Atlantic, like Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and then the southeastern and Gulf states like Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Florida. All of these areas are going to be experiencing above average temperatures pretty much for the entire week from the 8th till about the 15th, which is going to lead to above average temperatures. And also, we're going to probably, it's going to feel like a heat wave. It's going to be well above average in some of these regions. Again, if you looked at the temperature forecast, uh, a lot of those areas that are in the moderate shade of orange especially are going to be above average and it's going to be quite noticeable and you're going to feel like it's been a very hot week after it's all said and done. Now your second special note, we have a 
cooldown coming in for a lot of these areas out west. But first off, I want to start start off by talking about interior New England there. Again, northern New York, northern Vermont, northern New Hampshire. Northern New Hampshire is very beautiful, by the way, guys. Berlin, New Hampshire. If you're from there, comment. That'd be super cool. I know it's a smaller town, so probably nobody's watching from there. Super beautiful area just to the north of the White Mountains. The White Mountains by themselves are obviously insanely beautiful, but north of there is an also a kind of underappreciated area that's very beautiful. Upstate Maine as well. Going to be in that below average column. That's kind of like Lumberjack Town. If you've been up there, it's, it's crazy. It's like all Lumberjacks. You wouldn't believe it. Uh, we have California, Nevada, Utah, Colorado. Basically, those southern Rockies northward, we're going to be experiencing a cool down here. And for the west, particularly, this is, you know, more of a notable thing. Interior New England, we've been dealing with, you know, above and below average temperatures. So this isn't too crazy. But out west, you guys have been dealing with warmer than average temperatures west of the Rockies for quite a while now. And Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Nevada, California, Utah, we're all experiencing a cool down which is going to be super cool. Probably a lot of you have probably been wanting to have a cool down. I think in the Northwest we have had some cool downs, but I know that California, Nevada, Utah, it's been very sparse with the cool downs. So it's, it's cool to see that coming around Northern Rockies, Southern Rockies. All of us are going to be experiencing a pretty big cool down. And I just wanted to let you guys know that I think that a lot of areas, mountainous regions in Northwestern Wyoming could be experiencing their first snowfall of the season this week it is very possible so that's very exciting i might even have a video out about that as i always make a video about the first snowfall of the year for certain regions and that could be the first snowfall for those regions so i just want to let you guys know that uh the dakotas nebraska minnesota were also in this cool down now we're going to move on to our third special note and it's going to be stormy as you saw in the precipitation forecast from that Pacific Northwest region down into Idaho, Montana, all of those northern Rockies basically, as well as northern Utah. And again, since it's going to be stormy, we could be experiencing our first snowfall there for northwestern Wyoming. The Dakotas, Nebraska, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, and some of those Great Lakes regions are all going to be experiencing stormy conditions throughout the week. Uh, but particularly for a lot of regions in South Dakota in through Minnesota and Wisconsin. We will be seeing, seeing even more stormy for those regions. Those are going to be the most notable regions for that storminess. But overall, all of these areas are going to be dealing with some storminess throughout the week. As well as upstate New York, by the way. I wanted to mention that because I didn't before. Uh, and then fourth but not least, we're going to be dealing with drier than normal conditions here. For Texas up through Arkansas into Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, Georgia, Florida, uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, up into coastal regions of the Northeast and the New England states, including Boston, New York City. All of these regions are going to be dealing with drier conditions than average for the entire week, which is good news because a lot of these areas have been affected by Dorian, particularly in the southeastern United States, areas like Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia have all dealt with a lot of rain, a lot of flooding, and a lot of wind, and it's going to be really, really good to get a break from everything, basically, a lot of the precipitation and whatnot. Uh, just having a break and having a good, you know, solid week to try to recover from a lot of the damage that's been done and a lot of the flooding. If it was a rainy week, that'd be really bad because it wouldn't really, it would slow down the process of the flooding dying down just because we'd have more precipitation piling on, but it's very good news to see that we're going to be having drier than normal conditions for the recovery from this storm. Uh, as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to be bringing these weekly forecasts every week, like always. I just want to let you guys know, if this was your first one, we're gaining subscribers a lot again. Once again, uh, we're going to be having a winter forecast, a new one coming out in... I'd, I'd say it's a safe bet to say we will have our third winter forecast coming out in the next week. Uh, it's been requested by so many people uh, that I'm going to try to update it and try to see what I think is going to be different. I am keying in on the idea that we will be dealing with a negative NAO. I think that it's a lot more likely this year, so it is going to be a bigger player, I think, than I originally thought. So that is going to play a lot into this forecast. And also the AO looks pretty good. Uh, with the Greenland blocking and then the AO, uh, looking like it's a solid chance to be negative. And the PNA just keeps getting better and better in the EPO. So uh, the oscillations are lining up to be really good. And obviously, I'm going to continue making the educational videos 
for all those oscillations. As these coming months come on, I'm going to be trying to make one of those every once in a while because you guys really enjoyed that and requested more ones, but I'm going to be making more of those. Just wanted to give you guys a little bit of insight into my future uh, uploading schedule and what I'm working on. It's very exciting stuff, guys. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this weekly forecast. If you are in the southeast, guys, uh, I hope that everything is well. I hope there wasn't too much damage from Dorian for you, and I hope that everybody recovers quite nicely. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.